the Hangout on Air from the Ivy Talk at Manchester location. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, introduce my two uh, presenters here. Uh, one is Timothy Jung, who was uh, the initiator, initiator of Ivy Talk here in Manchester. He's also the director of the Creative Augmented Health uh, Realities Hub in the Department of Food and Tourism Management at Manchester Metropolitan University. And also welcome uh, to Alex Gibson. He is Assistant Head of School of Hospitality Management and Tourism at Dublin Institute of Technology. Uh, basically, uh, we are going to uh, talk about augmented reality. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, your experiences so far and where the topic is at the moment and uh, risks and challenges and uh, what you expect in the future. And uh, my first question, whoever wants to answer it first from you, uh, would already be, so where are we with AR at the moment? Okay. I think it uh, depends on your perspective. Uh, I think if you're working in the industrial or engineering space, uh, you're probably getting excited about the fact that this technology is now about to be commercially viable in your business, your industry, whether that's architecture or engineering. Uh, we're seeing some interesting innovations there. I think what struck me after a full day of discussion, <laughs> it was a half day normally, but that's, I yeah, think you call it a full day. It's like a full day. It was, like a full day. It was you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty around mm -hmm. adoption rates in the consumer space. Mm -hmm. uh, this conference today, uh, which Timothy uh, organized, you know, there was a lot of focus on tourism, but broader than that as well, we touched on retail and we touched on general adoption. And uh, I think it's fair to say that, you know, one or two of the speakers, I think, gave us a good reality check, excuse, mm -hmm. excuse the pun, in terms of what we can expect to see in the, in the short term, certainly. Yeah, I think from my point of view, um, uh, I think it's still early stage. I think it's a good idea. This, well, certainly, we, everybody will agree that this is a great technology to life. And um, I, I think from our experience, we tend to focus on the more kind of the development, design side, the user experience. Uh, but, but I think, as I mentioned in, in the speech, uh, without kind of business model, sorry, you know, not many industry will invest uh, about this technology. So if there's no return of investment, uh, then I think it's quite difficult. So that is an area something I think we need to think about and look at it in order to implement uh, this AI technology in a wider context in the tourism. Yeah, I think that's a good point, especially in the tourism area where given the nature of the organizations, they don't necessarily have large research budgets. I think academics can step into that space to, to help uh, answer some of the questions. As you say, Timothy, you here in MMU have done a lot of research around user experience in quite a few areas, including in Dublin. Um, I, I suppose we just don't have enough case studies to start to, to ask the hard questions yet in terms of business models. Yeah. We, can, we can hypothesize around different models in tourism, mm -hmm. particularly uh, models where, for example, museums install the AR and maybe they have their own um, devices that they loan or they yeah. charge people. That's one model. Mm -hmm. There's obviously the model where uh, if an app has a sufficient number of users, you can get a, what might be called in marketing an eyeballs model. There's, there's enough consumers that uh, brands will be interested in putting their logo, for example, or yeah. sponsoring it. But we, we just don't have enough um, traction, no. enough penetration. I think, yet to actually do some robust analysis for business models yet. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, in NMU, in AR Hub, we, we have a one uh, pitch of students doing uh, research about AR business model uh, in the context of uh, cultural heritage tourism. And um, but still, we see that, um, you know, you know, to fully kind of uh, uh, verify the business model, there are still payment uh, kind of system should be embedded. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think it's a very, very. Um, even though we are we are very fortunate, to one museum is really helping us to to develop this business model as part of their project. But we see that technically and commercially, it's still some kind of, you know quite challenging. That that's kind yeah. of a current is what I say. I think what would be um, useful today was. As educators, there was quite a good discussion around mm -hmm. AR in the curriculum, pedagogy, how we can actually embed it in tourism courses. Mm -hmm. And 
what, what's clear to me is that we need to work even more closely with industry. You know, I think there's a willingness on industry's part to, to help us. Mm -hmm. um, some criticism, I think it's fair to say as well, that we, we need to work more closely in that area. Uh, and I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities there across the entire curriculum and across each year of undergraduate, indeed postgraduate. Mm -hmm. We're just beginning to see how this technology, I think, can really help facilitate the soft skills mm -hmm. that we increasingly say are so crucial mm -hmm. uh, to, to, our, to our student body. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, on top of that, uh, that we have a uh, couple of discussion with the industry people. I mean, AR is, yes, I think it's good for higher education, for the university education, but I, uh, what I see here is a really kind of opportunity for uh, staff training. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, hospitality you know, in a hotel or restaurant context, you know, how are you going to manage the level of service, standard of service, and then it's just can you show the image of where the table should be set yeah. like that? Uh, I think there are some opportunities for training in yeah. the tourism hospitality industry. That's a good, I think that's a really good point, especially, you know, uh, uh, the on the restaurant side, resources are, are scarce, and I'm sure it's the same in Britain and Ireland. So, you know, the ability for um, students in their own home, even for mm -hmm. example, to use wearable, whether it's a virtual device, AR device, as you said, it's very exciting for them to re replicate a task yes. uh, many, many times mm -hmm. in a virtual way and improve the mm -hmm. ability, which is almost impossible to do in a real restaurant yeah. context. Really? Because the number one is cost too much. Yeah. Yeah. Time and that is quite challenging. The professor would have to be there yeah. at the time. All of those. So factors. you can't do that. But I think, I think it's kind of a augment, uh, AI application will help for them to see the image and uh, yes, I want to set the table like this, or, or what their room should be like that. Yes. So I think the education is some. Uh, well, we are in education, <laughs> aren't we? So yeah, that's our I job. Think, yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that's our industry. Uh, before we uh, look at all the tourism or cultural heritage. I think there are great kind of a, uh, opportunity for us to explore using AR for education for sports in the academics and also industry. So in terms of industry, what do you think? I mean, AR is quite old actually, right? As mm -hmm. we have heard today. So um, business model is one challenge, right? So which other challenges are there and which are the main players in terms of tourism industry which actually should use or would have an advantage from AI? I think uh, there are a number of challenges. I suppose the most obvious challenge uh, where we still don't know the answer yet is, is on wearables. You know, where, where will the wearables um, issue uh, eventually finish up? Uh, certainly at the moment where people mm -hmm. interact with AR is either on a, a tablet device like Timothy has there or a mobile phone. And we know that that's not ideal. That there are lots of uh, mm -hmm. social, physical, even financial and privacy. There are a range of risks attached to that. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's a big uncertain issue in terms of the, you know, the challenges. Mm -hmm. at, at what speed can the industry itself deliver wearables that mm -hmm. uh, have a, a, a ubiquity and adoption rate? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we last year, 2014, we did a, a kind of first Google Glass uh, AR project with my staff company. And um, even though there's great kind of reactions from both in industry and media, they talk about because maybe it's, it's a new technology, but we, uh, we had to step back to the um, uh, smartphone because, you know, how many people will use? The wearables mm -hmm. is too expensive, and um, there's not enough uh, very very useful application in the wearable. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless we have you know customers or tourists to see the real value, mm -hmm. why they have to use those uh, yeah. uh, you know wearable uh, technologies? Yeah. yeah. In the short term, I think there was a lot of discussion about what will be the killer app, and one or yeah. two participants said, if for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, on your Chrome device or on an Apple device, or when you were interacting with Siri, half of your screen suddenly appeared in an augmented format showing navigation, etc. If it was, as it were, hardwired into the device, that would be a game changer for sure. Yeah, yeah. It would certainly bring a lot of exposure. There was no evidence that's imminent. Uh, personally, I think an area where we will see more exposure of the technology to consumers, which in turn will lead to greater familiarity, maybe even acceptance, is in the retail space. Mm -hmm. I think in, in retail context, we are about to see a lot more of the use of this technology in, in department stores, for example. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be much more commonplace. So that, I think, will, will help build awareness of the technology. Yeah. I think eventually, how many, it, 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 
the end of the day, it's adoption, isn't it? How many people will really use it? Okay. So that that is the main one, one of the yeah, main main point, I think. So, yeah. Uh, we were talking about the supply side now, basically. Mm -hmm. So moving and uh, in terms of demand side, we were talking about stuff uh, that it would make sense to uh, educate them. So which other main target groups, target groups do you see in terms from the customer side using AR uh, applications? Um, we, uh, I think we did a number of different projects. I think uh, from the Dublin project, we are, our current project is uh, with Massachusetts Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, we did a number of uh, different kind of qualitative study with the uh, interview and focus group. And um, our conclusion is, um, I think, because it, because it, it is a kind of cultural heritage and it, it is part of education, all the children in Manchester should visit <laughs> the museum. Okay, it's, a, it's kind of compulsory. So I think, uh, yes, there are some opportunities for all the senior people and other people, but I think the children or school children, that is the important for enhancing, you know, to enhance the uh, great uh, learning experience, I think that it will be the uh, kind of a main, uh, one of the main target markets. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think our research shows that, and also we are actually developing some application for that particular target market at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because school children or young uh, kind of. That's children. interesting. I mean, we're working in Dublin on a project with one of the uh, museums. Or with, the target market again, 11, 12 year olds, we, we, we haven't gone into the research phase yet, but that's our hypothesis too. I think that uh, you're right. I think also it comes down to the technology. So with children in a museum or internal context, you can use the, what's called image-based uh, technology, which works very robust, it's very strong. One of the challenges, there is a technical challenge around uh, AR when you're in open spaces, when you're using what's called GPS technology, mm -hmm. when you're trying to use it for navigation. The reality is that nobody's really cracked that properly yet. Uh, but certainly with the trigger-based, image-based, there's a lot of really good um, material, a lot of good resources, some fantastic animation out there that can be used for uh, school children in particular to uh, complement what they're doing. And there's a lot of evidence that can really help them engage with uh, simple tasks like colouring in and reading and uh, the, the printed word, bringing it to life. So I think that uh, educators are excited by that prospect. Yeah. So I think you're right, Timothy, that, that would be a strong lead market. Yeah, I think the, another example, we, we had a project with the Gibo Tin Mine Museum in Cornwall, it's, it's part of the UNESCO World, UNESCO World Heritage Site. And I, I think we tried both augmented reality and virtual reality as well with the Samsung gear. And um, I think children, they are very much engaged with uh, this technology. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, well, I'm not saying the, the, um, the other group, uh, they don't like it or they're, they're not going to, what they are engaged in. They, they, they were, yeah. they, they were, they were the, the, the other market that is talked about uh, to a degree is the gamers market. Yes. You know, sort yeah. of the, who using gaming, you know, we're certainly seeing uh, Microsoft and even PlayStation 4 now mm -hmm. has a lot more AR built into it. So that's another market where I think mm -hmm. um, you know we would probably see people are very comfortable with new technology. Actually, they're driven by new technology. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a market that would be a strong lead market in in the gaming area initially. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, it's just AL is the all different level of augmented reality applications. So it's simple, just show text image. But uh, what I think is uh, from our experience. There are more, if you talk about personal, uh, you know, person's story, you know, or culture, history, I think that is much more, more selling to the public engagement. Mm -hmm. and, and also gamification is the great um, uh, area, uh, kind of potential area for explorations. So, you know, it's much more you can uh, increase the engagement, uh, with, especially uh, school children. So uh, those are areas we are looking at as part of project at the moment. So uh, if I would say in relation to adoption, I think if you take the normal model of the diffusion of adoption, mm -hmm. adoption rather, if you're innovators, you're early adopters, yeah, yeah. I think that social sharing tools, I think we'll see more and more apps, particularly the apps that get this right, that make it easy to share the content mm -hmm. on you know, Facebook and yeah. Twitter. That, I think that that's, that's going to be something to watch. Uh, we saw some examples today of apps that are making that almost center stage in what they do, mm -hmm. the shareability dimension. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So what do you say uh, for the tourism industry? Uh, augmented reality is kind of a luxury, or is it a must-have at one point? Or already maybe even? I don't think we can say it's a must-have yet. I think that we just don't have the empirical evidence to show that it's a must-have from, from two perspectives. One is either it makes more revenue for the tourism facilities or it enhances the customer's experience so much that it, it binds them in a, in a loyalty way. Or maybe a third dimension that it somehow reduces the costs. And we're seeing some interesting opportunities around AR to reduce queuing times and things like that. But, um, you know, we're a long way yet from being able to hand on heart and say, you, this is a must-have technology. Um, I think one of the perspectives is in how companies or organized tourism uh, organizers are using AR. I think it's more media coverage at the moment. That's a good point, yeah. Instead of a real <laughs> yeah. kind of a commercial application. So uh, if you're using, of course, you know, at that point, there are, you can see the great engagement with the public, okay? so. And also, you have great media coverage. So that's the one of the key reason why companies are, you know, investing some money for AR. But as I said earlier, uh, you know, if we cannot resolve the um, very fundamental issue about business model, uh, then I think there's a more it'll take more time to see if AR will be, you know, implemented in the tourism industry. Yeah. Uh, we were talking and have heard a lot during the IP talk as well about yeah. benefits and how AR makes our lives mm -hmm. or should make our life mm -hmm. easier. Uh, what are kind of risks involved with AR? Can you think of any risks or what are... There were a number of risks that were surfaced, <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Physical risks. Some of them physical. Using these uh, wearable or mobile devices, you know, they're obviously potentially a, a target for thieves. And uh, particularly if, you're, if, you, if the experience is so immersive, so good, maybe you're not paying attention to around just that, you know, not necessarily a huge issue. I think one that was raised was issue around uh, data and privacy. A lot of the excitement is around AR enabling people to connect with other people, to identify where people are in a crowd and all those sort of things. But that brings a, with it a, a whole range of issues in terms of who has the data on where I am right now and how is that data uh, held and shared ultimately. Mm -hmm. So that's a big issue, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, any social risks as well? We saw some with, uh, we, I, won't, I, won't use, I won't use the phrase, but we all know we're going to talk about the people who wear, uh, wore, wore Google Glass. Certainly, that was an example of a product that had, uh, certainly the early adopter, shall we say, was that there was a certain uh, notoriety about that. So there was, there was a certain stigma, I suppose, to, to it. It's ubiquitous. I think it were, it were more fundamental problems there anyway than the, the design and styling side. Um, you know, personally, I think that. Uh, we will see more ubiquitous uh, adoption of more stylish wearable devices. How long that is away, we really don't know yet, mm. but I think that's coming. So where else is um, just, you know, talking about the future, where else do you think is augmented reality going? Well, my hand is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's such a good um, idea. I mean, but I think, you know, to that kind of a, uh, uh, AR technology can be implemented. I think we talked about hardware, software, and also infrastructure. Yeah. And also, I mean, so, so Actually, I was just going to say that we didn't really discuss it a lot today, but yeah. in terms of infrastructure, it's probably the most important. It's not a physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. but probably the most important uh, is the link between the Internet of Things yeah. and uh, augmented reality. And we're already seeing really exciting stuff in the enterprise and industrial AR with companies like Dacry who've developed a smart helmet where engineers are now able to go into heating plants and information is shared with them on the controls that they're able to manipulate the information on their visor and the screen and that in turn then is updated in the Internet of Things, so a continuous loop of information. So that's really exciting space that we're seeing emerging there. Yeah, but without kind of a you know, sensors, you know, connecting other device, other contexts, other environment, you know, open reality itself, you know, may not fully working. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what uh, I think you're right. It'll be a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. between it and particularly Internet of Things. Yeah. yeah. I guess we could talk about this topic like. Well, <laughs> we could, but I might miss my plane, which is waiting for me at the airport. Yeah, yeah. I'm very aware of that. Thank you very much, Alex, for your, uh, your contribution. Yeah.
do is um, my pleasure to, to host this IT uh, uh, talk. Yes. So um, we would like to thank you for listening to uh, this uh, Hangout <laughs> on Air, which is, uh, as I said at the beginning, from the IFIT talk uh, at Manchester. IFIT talk is a, a new uh, kind of initiative from IFIT where we uh, provide and support uh, people like uh, Timothy, who initiated this event, uh, to uh, kind of uh, spread the word about IT and tourism and ICT and how important it is. Uh, we will provide a link uh, in the uh, bottom area of the uh, video, so you can go to our website and see more information about the IT store. Thank you very much to both of you. I know you are going to run that off. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's keep the conversation going. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Thank yes. You I look forward much. to hearing from people out there uh, what they think as well. Yes. It's important yes. to get a dialogue, yeah. uh, get some feedback. We well. don't have any questions uh, at the moment. But if <laughs> there are questions coming in, uh, we will uh, answer them. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.